Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to another video or oh, hello if you're new. Today I'm going to be wrapping up all the books I completed in December. I have spoken about most of these books in vlogs. So what I will do is in the description box below, I will have a list of every single book that I'm going to talk about in this video as well as timestamps. So you can choose which books you want to hear me talk about. But I'll also leave a link to the vlogs where each of these books were discussed because sometimes my thoughts do change while I read a book. So I think it's always interesting to hear people's thoughts while they're reading a book. I always appreciate it. So make sure to check that out. There's only one book that did not make it into a vlog, which I will start with today. And that is The Bear and the Nightingale. I picked this book up for the winter night read along. This was our November read. So I finished this like the first day of December. This was a reread for me. I first read this on audio a few years ago, I think when it first came out and I liked it, but I didn't love it. I don't think I retained a lot of the story and I definitely enjoyed this one a lot more second time around reading it physically and also annotating it. This is basically a Russian inspired fairy tale. We follow a girl called Vaskia. We actually first introduced not to Vaskia but her family. So we meet her parents and she has a few older siblings. They live in this cabin in the woods and Vaskia is born into power that we don't know a whole lot about but we know that her grandmother had this power and it seems to be quite hinted that this was her grandmother's undoing of sorts. Not that she turned evil. It seemed to be that the power was what determined her life and her life path. And so Vaskia, we watch her grow up sort of struggling with her power and having the ability to see the spirits because there's all these different spirits in this world which I just loved them. There's a lot of different house spirits and there's different forest spirits and your average person can't see the spirits but Vaskia can and she communicates with them. She also treats them how they're supposed to be treated. Like you're supposed to, you know, give them bread. It's like kind of a tribute of sorts. And a lot of people don't do that and a lot of people don't believe them anymore because it's sort of like they're the old gods. If people can see them, they're often fearful of them rather than befriending them like Vaskia does. So we watch Vaskia grow up having this ability to see the spirits, to communicate with them, sort of how that makes her an outcast of sorts because no one else can see them and communicate with them and people think she's strange. She's often called a witch for being able to do so. What this book is mostly about though is Vaskia growing up during this time period where women were expected to become wives at age 15 and then become mothers and that was their life. They were just there to be married off and then have kids and she does not want that. She is, wants her own life. She wants to travel the world. She wants to do her own thing. She has a very rebellious personality and we're constantly seeing her get into conflict with her father, her older brother and also like these other males that try to control her like other women in her time are controlled. I love the atmosphere of the story. I think that is the strongest component of the story. It's fantastic. The winter vibes, the cold setting, also just all these little spirits around that Vaskia can communicate with so, so much fun. I did really enjoy this book. I think I ended up giving this about a 4.25. The first time I read it, I gave it four stars. I do think this does fall more on the historical setting than it does fantasy. There are definitely fantasy elements to the story and I don't want to like completely discredit them. Where this book loses me and where this series loses me and why I don't think it's going to be a favourite like I hoped it would is because it's more historical. I will also have the link to the live show that we did on Meg from Meg with Books channel down below and up in the description, not description, the cards if you want to hear all our thoughts and how we discussed this book. It was a lot of fun talking about this with the others. So every other book I read in December were in vlogs so if you watched all my vlogs you might have heard of these and unfortunately just looking at all the books I have here and the books that I read I did manage to read a lot and have a successful reading month in terms of the amount I read but unfortunately I didn't love a lot of the books I read so we're gonna get a little bit ranty. I'm <laughs> well, not ranty but we're not gonna say extremely positive things. Let's just start with the <laughs> worst experience, worst book I read and that is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. I did originally start this book in September. I read most of it and then I think I had the last 200 pages or so left to read in December. I liked the story and the setup of this book. This book starts off in a small village and we meet this boy called Kip and he was raised by a single mother in this village and his village is attacked, his mother is killed and we very shortly after are introduced to the prism and some other characters that are 
high up in society and also have magical powers and just they're really well-known figures in this world so we are introduced to the prison and what makes him so special is his ability to do with magic because in this world the way the magic works is there's seven colors most people who have some sort of magic only have like the ability to use one or two colors but what makes the prison so special is there's only one of him first of all but also he has the ability to use all seven colors which makes him have all the magic essentially we find out that the prism is actually the father of this boy called Kip so after his mother is killed and his village is attacked Kip is taken in by the prism but also taken to this magic school and the organization where they raise and train other kids and people that have these magics to use them sort of in the military we haven't really gotten to that stage yet but they are definitely used for military purposes that's essentially the premise and I really enjoyed the premise I really enjoyed the magic and how your magical status sort of impacted or influenced your hierarchy status in this world I really liked how that all intertwined I thought it was a really interesting dynamic in terms of power not just like ability power but also political power in this world as well I wasn't able to enjoy this book at all unfortunately and I talked a lot about this in my vlog where I finished this book and that's largely because this book is just so offensive in terms of how fat phobic it is and also how misogynistic it is I said this in my vlog um, as well is I think what also made this even more offensive for me personally is the author wrote a lot of the fat phobia and a lot of the misogyny he did it in a way that was intended to be funny like it was a joke like he didn't mean it seriously and I personally find that worse and more offensive because that was an intentional choice and those things aren't funny I hate even calling things where it's to degrade a certain group of people or to degrade a person and calling it humor it's not funny it's not humorous it's just mean it's just wrong unfortunately this book was just jam packed with that so even though there were really cool elements in the story really cool world building really some really fascinating characters i couldn't enjoy any of them because the problematic elements just really <laughs> really weighed all the rest of it down so unfortunately this book was a one star read for me amanda knox waiting to be heard a memoir this i ended up listening to the audiobook of i really enjoyed the audiobook and highly recommend it if you can get your hands on it because amanda does narrate it herself this is amanda telling her story from when she was an exchange student from america doing her exchange in italy and she was falsely accused of murder her roommate was murdered six weeks into her trip and her and her boyfriend at the time were both accused of murder and they were put into the Italian criminal justice system because the way the criminal justice system over there works is quite different to America and it's very easy for people with no charges to actually be put in jail and this happened to her and she was locked up for about four years and she tells her story from when she first went to Italy and also the events of the murder from her perspective and then most of this is about her time in jail and navigating the criminal justice system. It's a very difficult read at times, especially since she was only 20 years old when this happened and it just sounds like such a nightmare and such an impossible situation but a really important story to listen to. I first came across this case because I did study criminology for a little while so I found this book one day in a charity shop and because I knew who she was, because I knew a little bit about her case from my studies, I decided to grab this and it's taken me years to finally actually get to this book and I'm so glad I did because I I really enjoyed hearing her story from her perspective. So I also read The Name of the Wind. This was my second time rereading it. I then read for the first time the second book in the series, The Wise Man's Fear. And then I also read the short novella, The Slow Regard of Silent Things. I thought this novella took place after the second book, but you could read this anywhere in the series. Like it doesn't really matter. We followed a side character from the main series in this, but we never see the actual main character of the series in this novella or hear about him. It's a very short snippet story where we just sort of follow this one character in a day. It's I don't think it was a day but it feels like you know it's a very slice of life story and you get a little bit more insight to this character that you've already been introduced to. So I just thought I'd mention that here. I gave this about three stars. I thought this mattered where you read it chronologically before I'd read it but it really does not matter where you read this or when you read this. You could read this first. I wouldn't really recommend this reading this first because there is no like plot at all but if you want to get an idea of Patrick Office's writing 
or maybe the world or this character then you could it's up to you now these two i have decided i don't like this series so the name the wind we're introduced to this innkeeper and he starts telling his story to this chronicler this chronicler comes and finds him actually and recognizes him to be this legendary figure in this world who is really quite notorious but also quite lost there's all these different stories about his character and no one really knows what's the truth what's made up or whatever so the chronicler comes to the inn finds this innkeeper who's been living in hiding and they sit down and the innkeeper starts to tell his story from when he was very very young so when the innkeeper was young his name's Quoth he was raised in a traveling troop his mother and father were part of this troop and then they had other members of the troop and they were basically a family a traveling family that played music they were all killed when he was quite young and then he had to survive on his own for a couple of years on the street he sort of lived as a thief and an orphan and a street rat he eventually picks himself up and finds himself at a university this notorious university where people learn magic that's all i can really say this does sort of play into a bit of the revenge story plot which i say that lightly though because this story for the most part definitely does deter and it gets very boggled down in certain settings and certain characters that you don't really follow the direction of a revenge story most of the time but i think that does seem to be where the main overarching story is heading i think the prose of these books are beautiful i had quite similar issues with both these books the prose is stunning as a series like a lot and pacing i think the first 100 pages is really great and the last like 100 pages is really great same with the wise man's fear but the middle section drags like no other book like it just drags and drags and drags and patrick roth is, is sort of almost too caught up in setting up each setting and it just got boring there's a really strong focus on quote trying to maintain his attendance at the university because he has like financial struggles he has to be able to afford going to university himself and we have a lot of that focus and sort of how he's trying to get by and just a lot of things like that that i had no interest in and found to be completely frank quite boring in while it was a beautiful story there was just not enough happening that was keeping my attention and i really had to drag myself i think if you watch my vlog you can really see me trying to drag myself through the wise man's fear in particular it got rough okay let's talk about one of my favorite reads of december and that is the elbow's gate which is book two in the broken earth trilogy the first book is the fifth season and in that we introduce to three characters and each of the three characters are individuals who have magical abilities but in this world instead of those who have magical abilities being powerful and held up in society and respected which is what i feel like you traditionally see in your fantasy books those in here who have magical abilities are greatly feared because their abilities make them really tied to the earth which is really dangerous because they can cause earthquakes they can cause tsunamis they can cause all sorts of supernatural disasters so there's a huge focus in here on environmentalism and the earth and its power and how it can destroy and then we also see these individuals who have this really close affinity to the earth and how they live and how they have to live because of their ability i think okay the fifth season five stars and this is probably more of a 4.25 the fifth season had a lot more parallels things that were more relatable to this world whereas this definitely had more elements of like sci-fi and fantasy and took itself off in its own direction which i really really loved and appreciate and i just think nk jameson is just a genius like with what she does with her storytelling but also like the symbolism and like meaning behind things that she does she's incredible and i still have not read the last book but i cannot wait to finally dive into it okay cage of souls this was another really disappointing read i had hopes for this one because i really enjoyed adrian kukowski's other book children of time which i think i read in november this starts off and we are introduced to this group of characters who are on this boat traveling to this island and you know that they are prisoners of a sense and they have all done something wrong and they're just about to be dropped off on this prison island that is really really dangerous this world is set in the future and this island seems to be like full of these mutant beasts and you know vines are alive and the setting was so 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 good i think i thought at first this book was going to be a bit of a survival story about these prisoners trying to survive on the island and then i thought it was going to be about the island itself it ends up becoming more about the prisoners and their backstory and how they got to the island which was just like the least interesting thing i thought this book could have been about <laughs> this also ended up being a very character heavy story and again the characters were just not that interesting all the interesting elements of the story were what we did not focus on which was just what disappointed me in the end i did still really love the setting and i 
do plan to give Adrian Kikowski books another shot, especially since I did really love Children of Time, but I'm definitely going to be selective about the books of his I decide to pick up. I also completed Cryer's War. This book follows a girl who is human and she wants to get revenge because her family was killed by the head family of the, what are they called, the Automa, which is essentially robots. So in this world, prior to the start of this book, humans made Automa's and they eventually took control of the world and they now rule the world. So in order to get revenge, this human girl disguises herself as a maid and starts working for basically the princess of the Automa's, but it's the princess's father that the girl wants to get revenge on. And essentially these two girls have an enemies to lovers romance. I hesitate to say enemies to lovers because it didn't really feel enemies to lovers. I said this in the vlog I read this but when I say enemies to lovers I expect more of a slow burn like bickering banter like hesitation to happen whereas these two grew affectionate for one another so fast that it definitely was not my preference. My biggest thing with this was I found the human character to be really really interesting and the automa character to just be very very bland. In fact the whole concept of the automates I didn't think was necessary because there was nothing different to them to the humans so I think where this book fell flat for me was there was just a lack of development in terms of the automa and like their world building and the way their system worked like because they were literally just humans but with a different name i just didn't understand the purpose of that like why go to the extra effort of creating these different beings to rule the world where they just mimic humans but they also just do the same thing as humans as well it just kind of seemed pointless and not fun i still enjoyed this book and i definitely plan to read the last book because it's only a duology let's talk about the long way to the small angry planet which was a re read for me and a close and common orbit both of these i read in december and i really enjoyed my reread of this i gave it five stars i think the first time i read it i gave it four stars so much fun we follow a crew basically a space crew and in this one unfortunately i didn't love as much and i gave it three stars these books even though they are a series and they are set in the same world they are not a direct sequels so they are companion series so we do follow the minor characters from book one in this book. So in this first book we have Rosemary who is joining the Wayfarer crew and they kind of do these like space jumps that's kind of how they work. The crew is made up of humans but also different like alien species that Becky Chambers has made up. The focus of this book really isn't any plot or story it's really the focus is on these characters and their interactions and how their culture like impacts how they interact with one another and those like sort of differences. It's so much fun, so wholesome, it's a really delightful story. I I really enjoyed the audiobook. I actually listened to the audiobook for both of these this time around and I really really enjoyed the audiobooks. The characters are honestly everything. Like their interactions are everything. Really strong found family dynamics. I think if you are someone who does rely on a lot of art and a lot of world building then you might not love these just because even though these are sci-fi novels there is not as much emphasis on the world building. I feel like this book set out what it intended to do. You're in the mood for a character found family driven story. I cannot recommend this enough. Now this book I think where it kind of lost me was the two timelines so we have one character in here who we are looking at her childhood and how she was raised and essentially she was raised by robots. While I appreciated getting to see her past I feel like but then we didn't get a lot of her present a whole lot because even though we saw her in the present we weren't following her POV we were following another character's POV in the present so we got to see her but from the other character's POV not from her POV. It just felt a bit disjointed and was a bit jarring for me to read personally and I didn't like the flow of the story either. I didn't hate it but just also having loved this book and giving it five stars going to this one was a little bit of a disappointment. Overall I really like these series. I think they're really easy to read as well if you are intimidated by sci-fi because I feel like it can be a genre that is intimidating. These are great places to start because they're so character focused and I feel like there's not too much emphasis on the world building and things that will be lost but there's definitely still world building that goes into this but it's world building to, to sort of enhance the characters more than to enhance the world. It's more world building to do with the alien species and that sort of plays into character again. I just love it and I really recommend it. Okay We Hunt the Flame is another book I completed in December and I felt pretty average on. Prose in this book and the writing was really stunning but there wasn't a lot that happened and that was my main issue. The setup of this story is we have a girl who disguises herself as a man in order to go hunting and she hunts and provides meat 
some food for her village. Then we have a prince character who actually works as an assassin and he has just been assigned to go find this hunter that he doesn't know is a huntress and has to go kill her. That's kind of the setup of the story and that's kind of all that really happens. The only other thing of any significance that really happens at the very beginning is both these characters are individually met by this like silver witch lady who's sort of a spirit of sorts like silver spirit witch lady and this lady comes and visits both of these characters individually and she instructs them and sort of gives them a quest to go and find like the lost magic of the world because this is set in a world where magic once existed and and it hasn't existed for quite some time by the start of this book so it's got that trope of like the magic returning which i really really loved but my main issue was there was a whole bunch of nothing that just happened in this book i think i will give the second book a go i think this is only a duology so i do want to find out how it ends but even now i'm really kind of struggling to give you anything else to say on it because there wasn't a whole lot that happened again i'll have my vlog linked because i know i talked about it quite a bit in that vlog and why this book sort of lacked for me i'm hoping that this author will improve because it is a debut so I do want to give her other books or whatever other books she puts out in the future a go. Under the Pendulum Sun was a disappointment. I gave this one star. This is a gothic fae story set in Victorian England. We follow this girl who is chasing after her brother who works as a missionary on this fae island and so this girl at the beginning travels from I think London to this fae island when she's not meant to. Like the brother doesn't want her to come to the fae island because it's like known to be really dangerous dangerous. I didn't love about this book was that whole plot about her brother sort of on this fey island and then when she arrives her brother's gone missing and she was concerned for him because they were exchanging letters and what initially drove her to come to the fey island was she hadn't received a letter from him in quite a few weeks so she was concerned and that's why she decided to go to the fey islands. She ends up finding her brother like before page 100 and that whole mystery is solved and then other stuff sort of happens but I feel like because that initial plot setup was done by page 100 there was nothing else that really happened in this book. It does sort of end up becoming uh, about the main character trying to understand what happened to the previous missionary that was working on this island before her brother and what happened to him because he sort of mysteriously left and this story ended up having incest which just <laughs> made it a one star read. I don't know if I like fae stories or not. I've never read a fae story that I've absolutely loved and I was hoping I would really like this one because like the gothic and fae combination really sound appealing to me but but this was not what I expected at all. Which sign? This is the first book in an adult fantasy trilogy. We follow two siblings who live in this world where magic is sort of banned. So those who are caught with the witch sign, which marks them as those with magical abilities, are taken to this island and you don't know what happens to them. There's belief and rumours and talk that these kids or whoever is found with the witch sign is killed, but there's no proof of that. And the girl in here, the sister, she does have magic magic of a sort and people in the village sort of all know that but like no one really says anything and then the brother doesn't but at the side of this book the brother is declared to have the witch sign by the guards who come around and collect those with the witch sign and he's taken to the island and then the sister is not so we follow both these characters pov it's just sort of them sort of dealing with this situation i can remember reading this and saying very early on when i was only like 100 150 pages in that i felt like things were happening too fast i felt like the story was giving us information too quickly and and that it wasn't savoring the delivery of the information and I was correct in that. I think most of the interesting things about this book was the first part of the book and then the rest of it was just there was no intrigue because all the information had already been delivered and then everything sort of just happened as you expected. I don't know if I'll read the next two books. I think this ended up being about a two star read for me. This was my favourite read in December. The Sword of Kai again I read because it was the Busy Bee Book Club pick for November and we had our live show I think it was the second weekend of December. Aaron and I, who runs the Busy Meal Club, Aaron from Brooklyn Busy, absolutely loved this. The start of this book gave me like the strongest Naruto vibes. We have a mother, Masaki, and we follow her and we also follow her teenage boy. They live on this island where pretty much everyone knows one another and like most people are related. Like we see the teenage boy go to school and like his uncle's the principal and he also comes from this like really notorious clan or legendary clan and the what makes them so well known is because everyone in this world
world does have like magical abilities to do with elements but their family have mastered this like particular technique to do with the elements that they use in fighting and that technique is passed down throughout the family and it's also what makes the family so well known essentially what happens is we are introduced to these characters i feel like the first half of the book we get this setup of this like small village or the small island where everyone knows one another and the magic and we get to know misaki who we do see quite a bit of her past we are introduced to her as this mother of i think she has like four children and she's really obedient but she lived when she was younger not rebellious but she was a warrior within her wrote and right and we see her like fighting as a teenager and how she was really really good loved the characters of this book loved the setting of this book i'm so sad that this is like basically a standalone it's a standalone but it's a standalone prequel so the author does intend to have follow-up books from this book that will be an actual series but i don't believe any of the characters will be in that series which makes me really sad because i love these characters so much i really enjoyed her kids and what it's like for them to grow up with this burden of this inheritance and being from this really well-known warrior clan and how they are expected to be great well-known warriors themselves when they are so young and that pressure i highly recommend this i listened to two audiobooks that were about race so the first one is white rage and the second one is white fidelity white fidelity is by a white author and white rage is by a black author i think both of these i would not recommend first like if you were someone trying to get into reading books about race i wouldn't recommend either of these first for different reasons white fidelity because it's by a white author and i think it's always more important to hear about own voices and read from own voices first but i definitely think white fidelity has a lot of value to it especially if you are a white person yourself i think there's a lot to take away from it again i don't think it would be my first recommendation and the reason i would say white rage isn't a book i would recommend first as well it's just because it is quite heavy on the history and does expect you to have prior knowledge on american history which i didn't have so when i read it i had to pause reading the ebook a lot i tried the audiobook for white rage and i could not stand the narrator so i had to switch to the ebook so heads up on that if you're planning on picking up the audiobook but i think that ended up being a really good thing because i did have to pause my reading a lot because i had to do a lot of additional research because i'm not super familiar with american history so that's all i will say on both of them okay we are now down to the last book and that was an audiobook i listened to which was the lovely war this book you should see the vlog where i read this book because this started out like with five star feels i loved the setup of this book we start off and we're actually introduced to the greek gods so we have like aphrodite and her having this affair and then like her actual husband coming in and then aphrodite starts retelling this love story between this young couple who lived during world war one and it's her trying to like explain the meaning of love of great love <laughs> it's so funny watching my vlog because it started off like five star feels and then it just dipped so fast and this ended up being a one star read i think my main part of it was it just ended up being like every other world war one or world war two story which i just don't really have any interest in there was a couple of like questionable things in here there's a lot of use of the n-word so warnings for that there's also something that happens at the very end with the main character hazel that I just sort of question, I can't say what it is without spoiling, but it is to do with like defigurement. This story ends up sort of being about like the meaning of love and I guess loving someone no matter what despite something happening to them. I think what I really loved at the beginning was it had a very different setup to your typical World War One, World War Two story with the gods and the god bits were definitely my favourites and the narration of the audiobook was fantastic, like all the gods sort of bickering and telling the story and then we had like music, Hazel plays a piano so there was actually piano in the audiobook and it was so 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 good and atmospheric but then a large chunk of the story just ended up being a typical world war one romance and that just wasn't for me i'm not into world war one or world war two romances hey guys it is editing nicole here i'm popping in because i completely forgot to mention just mercy and i had to mention it because it was one of my favorite audiobooks of last year and a book that i just highly recommend you read it is about the criminal justice system in america and how 
unjust and how unfair and how racist it is. It is basically a memoir and we are following a lawyer who he takes on cases where people have been put on death row and a lot of the people he takes on are black people or other people of colour and a lot of these people have been very unfairly charged. They have been charged from a young age and they are over punished. This book really looks at the over punishment that happens and the unfairness of it and of course of capital punishment and how it still exists. It still exists today. So I highly recommend this. So those are all the books I completed in December. Let me know what book you finished 2020 with. What was your last read? That is it from me today. I hope you are enjoying whatever you're currently reading and I hope to see you next time. Bye!